Rita, I didn't hear you come in. Well, next time I'll purr first. <laughs> I hope you close the door. Why? Everyone's asleep. Mm. Oh, you're looking over the uh, prescription records, huh? Mm-hmm. Think I'm okay, except for those two. Damn, who does this Weller think he is? And how come we had to mail copies of all this stuff to him and Amarillo? Because, Doctor, our new administrator sounds like a very careful, thorough individual. And he just wants to know what to expect before he gets here. Which, by my calculations, should be in about 42 hours from now. Hmm. Rita, the, those were honest mistakes. Oh, darling, I know that. It's just that there are so many people. God knows I'm not perfect. Oh, Richard, it's all right. No one became seriously ill. Excuse me. Oh. It's all right, Sweeney. Come on in. I, I, I just uh, wanted to tell you, Doc, uh, Mr. Bernstein, Building 6, uh, looks like he's coming right around. The new prescription, right on the money, Doc. Well, I must be doing something right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 Doc, I, uh, I saw Mrs. Cellini a couple hours ago. She said she's not coming in for that head session with the shrink tomorrow. Oh. The funeral's at noon. Thaddeus. Oh, right. Thaddeus. only a bystander, an innocent bystander. We don't know, Teresa. Not for sure. I know it. But the police said it. The police are crazy. Let's go, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not a good time and everything, but what we talked about yesterday, about the money? Shana, darling, not today. Will you call me tomorrow? Sure. I don't know, Mrs. Ryan. I think you're right. I think I'm, I am just a crazy old lady. What is it? The brakes. Please slow down. I can't. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Hang on.
happened? What happened? Mm -hmm. Isn't it obvious somebody's trying to kill us? I don't care what the police say. If they won't help us, I know somebody who will. <laughs> Ladies okay? <laughs> I need a vacation. You need sleep. Go home. Take a nap. Oh, no. I need a vacation. I need a vacation. I need a vacation. Don't you know any other song? J.J., you see before you a man decimated by work and dedicated to the principle that all employees are created equal. You just came back from a month in Hawaii. Look. You're nice and tan, and Mel had a good time inspecting the ruins at Pompano Beach. Well, now it's my turn to play. So goodbye, good luck. I'll see you in a week. Eddie, look, as long as you're going to leave me in the lurch to have a good time, at least have a good time. Thanks. Well, listen, uh, where can I get in touch with you just in case I need you? Just asking. Have a nice time. Wagon packed? Don't ever do that again. Do what? This? Jenny arrive in Minneapolis, okay? Mother met her plane 20 minutes ago. Well, what are we standing around here for? Come on, let's go. Slight problem. What? A client? Are you kidding? Come on. It may not be that easy. Eddie! Teresa, what are you doing here? Ah. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, it's great to see you. You look terrific. How are you? Uh, not so bad, considering somebody's trying to kill us. Poison oatmeal. The police say different, but I know. No, Eddie. Every night, Mrs. Ryan and me, we put out the breakfast. Always oatmeal. And we always give some to Thaddeus. Thaddeus? A little dog, a little dachshund. Only the other day, we gave him the oatmeal. First thing, before we eat, like we always do. And suddenly, he was dead. Just like that. Only 16 years old. 16 years old. That would make him, um... 112. Now, you suppose you're going to tell me that Howard Emily was old, too? He was only 74. Wednesday night, just like that, dead, for no reason. And it, something funny is going on. Hey, Teresa, you know, uh, when you get to be a certain age... What? Uh... The mind goes... No. Okay, I'm crazy. Last month, Elsa Kruger, her blood pressure went crazy for six days before they changed the medicine. But, but people get sick. Now you're going to tell me my car got sick. Your car? Somebody they fooled around with the brakes. Oh, sure, you're going to say like the man at the garage said. The brake fluid ran out. And so maybe I don't have the car checked very often. Well, well how often is very often? Uh, every couple of years. But the car was fine yesterday. Yeah, Teresa, what can I do? I'm a lawyer, not a policeman. Besides, you said the police checked the cereal for poison. Oh, they didn't do nothing, believe me. They think I'm just a crazy old lady. But you see, we were supposed to... I mean, I was supposed to go on vacation. Actually, Mr. Capper, you weren't planning to leave until tomorrow afternoon, were you? Uh... Yeah, I... I guess I could check Oh, out. you're a good boy, Eddie. <laughs> this week, I'm going right to your mama and tell her. I don't smell anything. We're not safe, Mrs. Wright. Not safe at all. We've got to get protection somehow. <coughs> we met. 
We might have been found dead just like Howard Emberley. Please, Teresa, I don't even think such a thing. Might have been an invalid, but he was a very robust man. Maybe we should see your nephew. Eddie? Uh, what can Eddie do? He said it himself. He's a lawyer, not a policeman. No, Mrs. Ryan. This is one of those times where the Lord helps those who help themselves. Huh. They sure don't mind what they charge for coffee. Okay, ladies, that's uh, 86 cents. Excuse me, sir, but uh, put up your hands. This is a stick up. wasn't even loaded. So what? You're a lawyer, Mr. Kaplan. It's armed robbery, with or without bullets in the gun. Teresa, are you all right? I'm okay, Eddie. You remember my friend, Mrs. Ryan? Oh, yeah, sure. How are you, Mrs. Ryan? I'm having Lacey arrange bail. No, no bail. Somebody's trying to kill us. At least here we can be safe. All right, tell me what happened. We think it was gas. What gas? In the apartment last night, somebody got in. I know because I found the bedroom doors open. We never leave them open. Never. And they also shut off the air conditioning. I woke up coughing at 2 o'clock. Thank heaven the alarm went off. I took a nap in the afternoon, so I forgot to change the clock. And maybe you forgot to turn on the air conditioning. And maybe, just maybe, you forgot to close your doors. Despite what your aunt has told you, Capra, we really did check out that oatmeal, and there was no poison. Your dog, ladies, hard as it is to accept, died of old age. There, you see. Now, I've talked to the district attorney, and he's willing to forget the whole thing. Well, we're not. We are pleading guilty. So, Mr. Policeman, just do your duty and lock us up, huh? Dr. Weller, are, are you sure that you wouldn't at least like to unpack? Time for that later, Dr. Gatlin. Tell me about these units here. Well, the, most of them have two bedrooms to accommodate our married couples, but uh, even with our singles, we encourage them to share an apartment. Very good, very it, uh, good. Cuts down on feelings of loneliness and isolation. Right. You know, I'd like to grab a few reporters and show them this place. All they ever want to do is write horror stories about the neglected elderly. Yeah. Some facilities deserve that sort of uh, exposure. I suppose that's true. And who's that? I don't know. I, I never saw him before. Excuse me. Hi. Could I ask what you're doing? Checking the lock to see who was picked up for us. Then. Excuse me. I'm David Weller, the new administrator, and um, I believe that you're uh, trespassing. Eddie Capra, I'm an attorney, and I have the permission of the uh, tenant to be here. Well, um... <clears throat> oh. Mr. Capra, uh, if someone broke in here and stole something, well, then I think maybe we should... No, call. somebody broke in and tried to kill somebody. What? Eddie, here it is. What'd you do with the holy water? I did a lot of blessing. You think I was going to dump it down the sink? Yeah, Dr. Weller, this is Mrs. Cellini. How do you do? My pleasure. Excuse me. The ladies here, Mrs. Ryan and Mrs. Cellini, particularly Mrs. Cellini, are under the delusion that someone's trying to kill them. This is no delusion, Doctor. I don't see anything. There's supposed to be three goldfish in here. Doesn't it seem a little strange to you, Doctor? Four days ago, the dog dies. Now somebody steals their fish. What do you know about this? Nothing. Uh, the dog just died. I assumed it was natural causes. That's your trouble, Doc. You keep assuming, like about Elsa Kruger. You and your pills. Eddie, the bags are packed. Okay. Mrs. Cellini, I assure you... Don't that... assure me of anything, Doctor. Just tell me, what are you going to do about Howard? But you didn't tell you about Howard Amberley, huh? Who? One of our residents died in his sleep last Wednesday. Heart failure. I'll show you the report. You say heart failure. I say foy. 
There was nothing wrong with his art. Teresa, come on, let's go. Io stavo proprio dicendo al dottor. Ma lo Mr. Capra. I've been on this job three hours, and this is the first thing that hits me. Now, and I'm sure you understand, I don't want to suddenly read some crazy accusations in tomorrow's paper. If you do, they won't be crazy. Will you listen to me? Don't worry. Right. Look, will you please hold the cabana for just a few more days? Don't worry, I'll send you a check. How do you like your tea, Eddie? Uh, what? Yeah, but I... I know, I know, but... Where do you want me to put listen, this? Listen, will you... Look, we're gonna be there, I just don't know when. Now, now if you'll... Hello? Oh. So much for the surf and sand. Not only that, just keep in my deposit. Why don't you get yourself a good lawyer? Did you give that water sample to Harvey? I gave the water sample and the cereal, and he's taking it to the lab right now. You should get your report tonight. Thanks. This bathroom, Eddie, you gotta keep it scrubbed, especially the tile. Now, Mrs. Wine and I have decided... We're not going to sleep in your bed. Oh, no, no, no. That's already decided. I'm on the couch. No, it's comodo. Don't tell me no. I love this couch. All right, now. Who wants lemon? Listen, uh, will you excuse us for a few minutes? Uh, Miss Brown and I have a few things to discuss. Why don't you unpack it? We'll be right next door, okay? I'm sorry. Uh... Oh, what? You couldn't leave him in jail. Anyway, who says you have to spend all your time on the couch? Yeah, well, uh, that's what I want to talk to you about. My Aunt Teresa, she's, well, she's a little old-fashioned, and uh, so is my mother. Uh... What's your mama got to do with anything? She's back in New York. Yeah, but my aunt writes to her once a week. Oh! Oh, so you want to cool it? It's not exactly cooling it. It's okay. She'd be on the next plane with a priest or a shaka. Maybe both. It's only going to be for a couple of... I said it was okay. Mm. Oh. I tell you, you're terrific. Not since Monday. Ah. Uh. Anyway, how long can it last? I mean, as soon as she proved that she's worried over nothing. Oh, yeah? Who says it's nothing? You mean somebody really is trying to kill them? I don't know. Maybe. Eddie, all you know so far is that a dog died. He was 112. A man died. He was 74. And three goldfish disappeared. Why? I don't know why. Maybe because they were dead, too, from that water in the fish tank. Eddie, I want to... Well, you know, when I was a kid, once in a while, I'd, uh, I'd liberate a comic book from a local candy store. John Dillinger. Or maybe I'd raid the cookie jar. And all she had to do was look at me, and she'd know. I mean, nothing got by her. So maybe she's a little older now, but I gotta tell you, until somebody proves she's crazy, I believe her. Okay. Let's say she is onto something. Then may I please tell you that you are barking up the wrong tree. Nobody is trying to kill your aunt. The person they're trying to kill is Mrs. Ryan. Says who? Well, when the girls and I were washing up your pots and pans. Which were clean. Not to them. Right. Mrs. Ryan happened to mention that she is worth $100,000. All in cash, all in savings accounts. And trust to who? Her only living relative. I knew we shouldn't have bought that piece of garbage. It's not a risk, not really. Everything 
about that looks risky. Oh, not with Nick. Look it, I will do anything. I will sign anything. I know that someday I'm going to inherit that money anyway. But the problem is not someday. The problem is today. <laughs> Shanna wanted to borrow some money from me. Fifteen thousand, wasn't it? All I know is it was a lot of money. Will you take on purple? Oh, Teresa, that's silly. I'll look it up. Uh, ladies, uh, can we hold off on the game for just a couple of minutes? You want to talk about our Emily? I'll talk. But Shanna, she wouldn't hurt nobody. Oh, no. Okay, I give up. Tell me about Howard Emily. A wonderful person. A professional man. Worked at some prison, I think. In Tennessee, a head shrinker. 30 years he put in, Eddie. 30 years, and they let him go. Said he was too old. <laughs> he used to run three miles every day. And he could recite every one of Mr. Shakespeare's sonnets. The night he died, I was going to see him. Why didn't I? You stopped at the bulletin board, Teresa. Remember? The bridge tournament. They were going to put us at separate tables. Oh, that's right. Ladies, uh, about Mr. Mamberly, uh... He was a very nice man, Eddie, and everybody liked him. That's why I'm telling you something crazy is going on. But if everybody liked him, then nobody had a reason to kill him. I know, it's complicated. But you'll figure it out. Uh, excuse me. Harvey, can we go outside? It's about that oatmeal. Poison, right? Poison wrong. They put it through every test in the book, twice. Mr. Capper, the dog really did die of old age. You're kidding? No. Harvey, what's happening to me? What, am I going crazy? I started to believe that somebody was really after those sweet old ladies. Well, you're not going crazy, Mr. Capra. This is a report on the water in the fish tank. It's loaded with some soluble compound called NL3C9. Vanidium? Right. The guys at the lab said if they hadn't woken up, they would have been dead in an hour of apparent heart failure. Morning. Morning. How would you like a punch right in the nose, huh? Did I, uh, did I leave my uh, green sweater in here the other night? It's in the closet. You want some, uh, breakfast? What I really want is six days on the beach, sun on my face, and you by my side. A jug of wine. Good dirty book. At least have some coffee. I can't. I'm doing the old folks home at 9.30. Look, do me a favor. Call Harvey. Tell him I want him out at the speedway to do a little digging. For what? Vanidium. It's a powder. Dangerous when liquefied. It's not some kind of insecticide? Paint solvent, among other things. It was also an additive for racing fuels until they found out the fumes, which were completely odorless, were hazardous to the health of the guys in the back of the pack. It's all in here. Well, then why bother Harvey? Let me go. You're babysitting, remember? Eddie, I Lacey, know... I told you before, I didn't hire you as a junior G-man. I can handle no this. No argument. Could be dangerous. Call Harvey. <laughs> wake you up so early, but Eddie wants you over here right away. Yeah, he wants you to keep an eye on the girls. I've got somewhere to go. Okay, bye. Autopsy on what? A dog? No, doctor. On Howard Amberley. That's absurd. Amberley died of a massive coronary. I signed the certificate myself. Yeah, I know. 
What's that? Some sort of accusation? Dr. Gatling. Mr. Kaplan. The night before last, somebody tried to gas Mrs. Cellini and Mrs. Ryan with vanadium. You know what the symptoms are? Nada. Zip! And why would anyone want to kill those old ladies? Why don't you tell me? How many other deaths have you had around here lately? This is ridiculous. Doctor, I've been acting director here for four months. In that time, we've had two deaths. Mr. Amberley and a 97-year-old great-great-grandfather who passed away sunning himself on the shuffleboard court. Now, if that represents some tangled web of incompetence or neglect, you're welcome to my resignation. Mr. Capra, can I talk to you? One New York boy to another. New York? You sound like Texas. <laughs> yes, sir. But you see, I was born and raised on Houston Street. Before they shipped me off to Korea, then came Texas. Listen, if you want to talk about the good old days by the East River, fine. But I still want that autopsy. You know what you're asking, Mr. Capra? You know the sort of questions you open up about his facility? About my staff? No. <laughs> no. -uh. I can't permit it. Don't jerk around the kid from New York. I was born and brought up in the Pelham Bay section of Brooklyn. Flushing Boulevard? Mm-hmm. You know what kind of a neighborhood that is. Mm. So when I tell you I'm going to get that autopsy, I'm going to get it. All right. You can have it. And I also want to take a look around the apartment. Oh, all right. Don't know what's there. Can't be much. We're going to clear out everything in a couple of days. What do you expect to find? I don't know. Maybe nothing. Oh, and uh, thanks. Second one on the right. If you ask me, you ought to be talking to Polly Ryan's granddaughter. She gets all the money, you know. Not all, Miss Lang. Don't you get fifteen hundred? That's right. A lot of the folks who do that. It's a little thank you for a little extra attention. Now, come on, Mr. Capra. Do you think I'd try to kill her for a lousy fifteen hundred dollars? Did I say that? Did you see anybody? No. Now what? You gonna take a specimen? Yeah. You might say that. Memo to all staff members. It's come to our attention that the old expense voucher game has gotten way out of hand. For example, luncheon for two at the Grecian Gardens, $51.86. At these prices, we could have entertained the L.A. Rams. And here's one, $110 a night for three nights in the presidential suite at the St. Jerome. Now, from now on, let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages to motels, not tourist traps. And here's one, $100. That's mine. Well, that's reasonable. Oh, lab costs. Laboratory costs are getting way out of hand. Fifty bucks to check a bag of oatmeal and fifty more for analyzing water from a goldfish tank. Madeline? Madeline! Harvey, are you sure you don't want to watch the show? No, no thanks. Hello? Capra? Hello? Capra, is that you? Hello, who am I talking to? This is... Uh... Is this 6561656? Yes. Hello? Hello? Harvey, was that the phone? No. It was the wrong number. Memo to Eddie Capra. Subject, the whiz kid. Hello? Anybody here?
hurting me. Yeah? Sorry. What are you looking for? Nothing. Yeah, well, you came to the right place. That's what we got around here, a whole lot of nothing. Now, what are you looking for? I told you, nothing. I saw you race the other night. I mean, I mean last week. What? The Wednesday night midgets? Right, the midgets. I thought you were terrific, Mr. Severino. I mean, really super. And I just wanted to meet you, that's all. Yeah, what's your name? Uh, Verna. Listen, I have to go. I, I really... Hey, you just got here. You know... Verna, a lot of the guys, uh, they think you girls are a pain. I mean, hanging around all the time. Me? I like it. So, uh, where are you from, Verna? Out of town? No, no, I, I live in Sun Valley with my mother and my father and my five brothers. My five older brothers, my five bigger brothers. Am I making you nervous? Oh, I know what it is. You don't like me. No, no, I like you fine, it's just... I like just... you, Verna. I like you a lot. Come on, why don't you come back into the little room back there with me, okay? No! Nick! Nick! Hey, honey! Hey, honey, come back! Hey, come back any night! Any night except Wednesday! I gotta drive the midgets! Oh, and Verna, I love you! You really get a kick out of that, don't you? Shana, baby, you gotta scare them off or else they just keep hanging around. Yeah, one of these days, one of them's not gonna scare. <sighs> You uh, talk to your gram yet? I can't find you. She's not in the village. No one knows where she went. Listen, Murray Schwartz offered me his backup car for the 400. Maybe I ought to take it. Oh, no, no. I'll find Graham. She'll lend us the money. I know she will. What? 85,000? We're not talking just about an engine now, honey. And what happens if I crack it up? What happens to your grandmother then? You're not going to crack up. Listen, Nikki. I don't want to give up, okay? I'll find Graham. We'll get the money. Promise. Dr. Weller, I was just checking inventory. Uh, you handled yourself badly with that lawyer, Gatling. Very badly. Considering your situation. I don't understand, sir. Well, Mr. Capra spent most of the afternoon checking our personnel files. He seemed to dwell a lot on yours. Mine? But why? Oh, come on. I checked the prescription records. I know what you've been doing. You're being unfair. Am I? I don't think so. I can understand one mistake, maybe even a couple. But, Doctor, you make a habit of incompetence. Excuse me. Dr. Gatlin. Just so you know, I can't protect you on the Amberley death. I tried. But Mr. Capra insisted on an autopsy, and I had no choice but to agree. I had nothing to do with his death. He died of a coronary. For your sake, I hope so, Doctor. I really do. Why are we hiding in Mr. Amberley's apartment? We're not hiding. We're waiting. Hope you learned your lesson. Are you kidding? You play detective, not me. Are you looking for anything particular in the scrapbook? I'm looking for what's not in the scrapbook, like those pictures on the wall. Somebody's been ripping pages out. Yeah, and I know. He's tall, dark, and ugly, and he smells like a gas tank.
were you? Now, what are you doing here? Just what I was going to ask you. Mr. Sweeney, right? You know, your picture doesn't do you justice. My name is Capra. I'm a lawyer. You mind if I look? I mind. This belongs to me. Yeah? Yeah. Well, then why don't I call Dr. Weller and let him decide? No, no, no. You can run, but where are you going to hide? What is that? Morphine? Yeah. Mr. Amberley, he was in a lot of pain the last few months. Gatling wouldn't prescribe anything strong enough. I hated to see the old guy suffer. Besides which, he probably paid you a pretty good buck. I didn't take a dime. Came from the infirmary. I came here to get it to put it back. Maybe you OD'd on morphine. Oh, that's crazy. Gatling would have noticed. It was a heart attack. We'll see. You been in here often, Mr. Sweeney? Yeah, two or three times. I uh, find this. I just located it this afternoon when I heard you and uh, Rita Langstarter come coming. That's when I ran out the back. Okay, now this is very important. According to the report that Thursday morning, you discovered the body, right? Yeah. Was there any water around? I mean, like in a bucket or a pail, the sink, the bathroom, anywhere? No. Did you use the john while you were here? The toilet? No, why? What do you want me to do with this? Well, I don't know. You said you were going to return it. So return it. Why did you let him keep it? Because Sweeney's right, even Gatling would have spotted a morphine overdose right away. Then what? The water in the toilet bowl was clear. No one in him. I know. But they just tie it together, those missing pictures from the wall and the pages torn out of that scrapbook. What is it? Just a thought. I don't know, maybe it's crazy. Maybe not. Come on, let's go. Aunt hey, Teresa? Aunt hey, Teresa? Shh, Mrs. Ryan is sleeping. Eddie, Ronald Reagan was just gonna walk out on Loretta Young. Forget Loretta, look at me. Two weeks ago, Wednesday night, the night Mr. Amberley died, you said you went to the bulletin board to check the pairings for the bridge tournament the following day? That's right. What happened that night? Think. What time did you check the board? That we started to watch the movie, but it wasn't so good. Uh, it was maybe 10.30. You went to the board, you read the names. That's right. With your glasses on. Sure, how else? What else did you see? Nothing. Aunt Teresa, are you sure you didn't see anyone else around that night? Think. That's right. There was somebody. I was trying to read the names. Miss Ryan and I always played together. I hear a noise. I look up. And there was somebody there hurrying away. I don't know who. I couldn't make out the face. Of course he could, not wearing those glasses, but the killer doesn't know that. That was the man who killed Howard? Suppose you were Howard Amberley's killer and you thought you'd been recognized. That's why... That's why... Oh, Jesus, Joseph, Santana, Maria. Oh. It's all right, Tia Teresa, it's all right. <laughs> but I didn't see nobody's face, I couldn't have. The killer doesn't know that, which means... Which means what? Which means I think I know who killed Howard Amberley. I still don't understand, Mr. Capra. I mean, what do you expect to prove? Murder, Doc. How, why, and who? Well, not one of my people. That depends. The medical examiner's signatures are still wet, Mr. Capra. But you are right. Amberley's lungs show traces of an enemy. But I still don't know, Eddie. Why am I here? To pick out the face of the killer. Huh? Come here. You see those people in there? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Who are they? Uh, uh, Eddie, uh... Come on, take a good look. Who do you see? Mrs. Ryan, right? Oh, yes, sure. Mr. Capra, you know Mrs. Ryan didn't kill anybody. What's the point? 
The point is, my aunt has trouble with her eyes. She has to wear glasses. Been wearing them for years. Aunt Teresa, I know how you feel about your glasses, but I want you to put them on. Eddie. I want you to put them on, take a good look, and tell me if you see the face of the person who came out of Mr. Amberley's room that night. Please. You're making me feel like an old lady, you know that. I don't recognize him. That's him. That's the man. No, 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 no. She's crazy. No, I don't think so, Dr. Weller. Or whatever your name really is. But I just got here Monday. I was nowhere near this place last week. Oh, but I think you were. I think you sneaked into Mr. Amberley's room while he was asleep. I think you dumped vanadium into the only standing water in that apartment that wouldn't attract attention the following day when his body was discovered. The toilet. Right. Well, you're out of your mind. Check the water. There's no trace of poison there. Besides, I've never been anywhere near that apartment. Well, you're half right, doctor. I did check the water, and it's clear. So? You were very careful to come back and flush the toilet to get rid of the evidence. When was it? Yesterday, Monday? The day you pulled the pages out of the album and the photos off the wall? That's ridiculous. You were very careful. And it almost worked. But you made one mistake. You left a fingerprint. One fingerprint which you left on the chrome handle of the toilet when you flushed it. How did it get there if you say you were never in that apartment? Doctor, the lieutenant's going to take your prints and he's going to come up with a match. Then he's going to send those prints to the Tennessee State Prison and he's going to come up with another match. He's going to match the prints to a name. And it isn't going to be David Weller, is it? Mr. Kefra. <laughs> His name was really Joe Callan. He and Weller were stretcher bearers back in Korea, both without ties and family, except Callan had escaped from Tennessee State Prison and then he jived his way into the Army. Mr. Amberley had him under treatment for years. In Korea, the real uh, Weller was killed and Callan switched IDs with him. He was mustered out as David Weller, assumed his life history, enrolled in college under the GI Bill, and went on to become a doctor. Sure, if Callan showed up as David Weller and Amberley recognized him. Uh, it was back to prison, or at least the end of a 20-year career as a respected administrator. Yeah, but how'd you get on to him? Harvey. No self-respecting New York kid would call it Houston Street. It's Houston Street. So I tested him. I told him I was brought up in the Pelham Bay section of Brooklyn on Flushing Boulevard. He never said a word. So? Pelham Bay is in the Bronx and Flushing Boulevard is in Queens. But all I did was prove he was lying about his background. The important thing was the fact that the killer had to be someone who would have known that my Aunt Therese was back blind eight inches past her nose when she had her glasses on. The staff all knew about her condition. Right. And as far as Nick Severino and that gang, it couldn't have been them because they spend every Wednesday night racing midget cars. Well, I still think you're pretty lucky to get that fingerprint off the toilet handle. Oh. You mean this? This isn't Callan's fingerprint, it's mine. Oops, the phone. Boy, you sure are smart, Mr. Capra. I would have never thought of that. Harvey, Harvey, you know what? Uh, Lacey and I only have a few more days before Jenny gets back, and uh, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, yeah, right. You know, well, I gotta get going anyway. Okay. I was gonna take a few days off. Good. Here, that's where I keep it. I'll see you at the shop Monday. Right. Hey, hey Harvey, thanks. Oh, yeah, I think it's great. It really is. No, no, no problem at all. Right. Okay. Okay, kid, pack your bikini. We're heading for Blue Skies of Incinnati. Eddie? Four whole days of doing nothing, you and me. Mother makes three. She just called from the airport. She's bringing Jenny home early. What happened? I think my daughter's been giving my mother a running account of our domestic situation. So what? Your mom is a big girl. Not that big. And the point is, is that I don't know how long she's going to stay, but while she's here, we better, I... Cool it. Miss Brown, don't look now, but your liberation is slipping.
Get ready because Cagney and Lacey's Sharon Glass returns to series television Monday nights this fall. The Trials of Rosie O'Neill coming to CBS.